you guys just watched um, Fraser's very powerful interview with Sheila Shea. As you can expect, Twitter was crazy. So many tweets. I have one right here from Leonard Gatson. Who Wait, said, say it before you do, because I, I, you just made a comment before we started filming about how Leonard, I was uh, saying that, yes. that she was contained and was able to tell her story in a meaningful narrative, and she, that's a sign of treatment. That's a sign yeah, of treatment. Yeah, that yeah. means that she's getting better, yeah. because in her state when she killed Patrick, there's no way she could have pieced together things right. in a sequential way like storytelling, being able to put things in order. The fact that I could see that on the tape and for so long because yeah. you were interviewing for, for an extensive period of time means that she's getting better. And that she and was that coherent and yeah. like understood. Yes. A lot of treatment. But lot. I think, and then talked about it many times and made sense of it. Yeah. yeah. But I think for people that don't understand that, especially like our Twitter followers, mm -hmm. it almost backfired because now they're like, well, she looks fine and oh. she just oh, right. she's just evil and she she, no, she's yeah. using this as an excuse, and I saw a lot of that on my well, timeline. Well, he was saying, you know, mental health is, you know, mental illness is real, and it's sad, like you guys said, it's sad that someone has to commit this crime for people mm -hmm. to take it seriously. Right, or to get treatment, to get treatment. for God's yeah. sakes. You can't, you can't get treatment like that for, oh, for yeah. an average person. And Dr. Dura, but then also when you're finally taking the medication, like she did, and then she started to feel good again, she thought, oh, okay, I'm cured, just like a common cold. It's like antibiotics. And you I take it for five yeah, days and you feel good. Yes. And I've read something great about that's this. That's the misconception. Is that, and one of the ways that doctors and therapists can help is to actually talk about it like it's an insurance policy. That medication is an insurance policy that you have to do it to protect yourself. And right. I think a lot of it, times people don't think about it And, that and way. it's right. really hard right. even to understand. But both bipolars and schizophrenics don't mm -hmm. want to take their meds. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's the strain. They can't really tell you why, right? They never really tell you. The bipolars kind of don't like miss. They miss their highs a little bit, but not really. When they when yeah. they go high again, they go, I don't really know why I didn't take my meds. And Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Sorry, it gets incorporated into their hallucinations yeah, and delusions yeah. that paranoia. like somebody's going to poison yeah, them yeah, with yeah, the yeah. medication. Yeah. So it's yeah, or it's the drug companies coming after them and all this. This is just my question, and you talked about this on HLN.com on on the website that this is like our problem of our generation is mental illness and mental health and all of that but I mean is it like autism where it just seems like more people are being diagnosed with it just no. seems like there's so much mental illness yeah. these days well, is there, it just there's, me? There, no, no there's more well there's more personality disorder would you agree with that there's more childhood trauma which is why I got so upset about the child abuse thing because that's all yeah. we see is childhood yeah. trauma 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 and, so it and is the, getting worse. The personality stuff, the psych, the psychotic illnesses, the bipolar, the addictions, and the schizophrenics, in my opinion, are just not getting treatment. There's They're no re, there's treatment. no resources for treatment. Right. Uh, well, because back in the day, what would they do to they the individuals in like hospital. this? They put them in a hospital. They were in the psych wards, the crazy places. Yeah, for, for years, just or lock them up in yeah. shackles. They're not well, treating but them. But sometimes they used to treat them. We, we can't, sometimes. We, but, right. That was why they got dismantled because they weren't doing that enough. And yeah. we just have nothing like that now. Right. Now we have these sort of three-day hospitalization, so people just go in and out of hospitals oh, all the right. time. Oh, and with psychotic illnesses like this, it really takes a village. The individual cannot manage themselves forever. It takes support, it takes family, it takes community. I mean, this woman, nine years, and well, it still seems like she could be on the edge on, if she could, right, right. She has to very much off. be careful. It's actually really interesting. In collectivistic societies, schizophrenia and psychotic disorders have way better recovery rates. Why? The individual's never usually living alone. They're always around family and friends, and they can check them and say, right. you know what, you're getting a little out of sorts. Did you take your meds today? Right. And and there's there's a lot of the kind of fear of authority and systems they they rely on them to, to help them right. rather than going screw you I'm, I'm, right. you're not the boss of me man which is what we deal with a yes. lot here yes. right? yes. so. a lot of people on Twitter were asking about the daughter do you think she receives some treatment a ton okay. all, all, the all the kids all right? the kids all the kids got a ton of trauma okay. treatment again that's why she was able to tell the story in a way that I almost couldn't listen how to how remarkable were no. the kids to handle it the way they did though oh. for this for the oldest son to step in and, and stop his mom from well, and, and all the while, the I love you, mom. Was, you're okay. So. I know. Yes. And I think that's what I said. They knew that she was struggling. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So were they? they I, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I would have been like, God. Why didn't you take your meds? I, I would have been like, take your meds. Yeah, I would have. But they probably went through that in therapy. Yeah, they knew yeah. too that mom was doing all she could. Like. Three yeah. jobs to survive, yeah. you know, yes. help five kids and having a really abusive. And they, probably, you know, I mean, you heard the daughter go, "Mom, are you okay? You're kind yeah. of staring yeah. off in the side." So I they all just, knew they just never imagined it would yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And they don't know what that is. They just, just knew she was never there. Too. Sometimes, no, like, but you're right. There? I mean, the fact that they all forgave her, I think, speaks to what a great mother she Thank was. Right. That was right. the part that got yes. me. And that, yeah. and that if she did get the lethal adjustment, they would have had that massive loss. Right. They would have lost. They would have lost a brother and a mother. I mean, even when she was gone all that time, because she did seventeen. 
months in jail yeah. and four well, and a half she, years she in was, treatment. So she, she was cut off for that for a long time. Yeah, they exactly. were in foster care for a while. Oh, oh, yeah, but, they, but they got good care, but for the grace of Are God. Are they all back yeah. together? Do we they know? all have relationships. I asked those kinds of questions. I can't remember exactly the response. Did you see I mean, they're much older. Are they all 27 now? Yeah, yeah. They all have they're all lives. Okay. Okay. They're all thriving, yeah. which is amazing. Are there parameters in place to keep that abuser away from her? I know that was one of the stressors that... I don't years. know, but that was never like, it's not, you know, those people that go back to abusers, obsess about them and think about them and go back to them a lot. It didn't seem like Nobody she did had any concerns about that. Okay, yeah. good. But that does happen. But you, you asked a question, was it you or was it you that where you were concerned now that she's outside of the treatment mm -hmm. facility, how will she Absolutely. react? She recently, yeah, I read, her father passed away and she handled it, they thought, better like than that could somebody be. that perhaps... You know, had did have a or didn't have a mental like illness. it could have been a trigger to like send they her back. They thought it may be a trigger, but she handled it with fine. Well, they see, I don't know what state she's in, but it, what, Michigan is it? Uh, no. Uh, but it, whatever it is, there's yeah. some states that really are are Oklahoma. 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 Some states really ha are models for treat for how yes. they deal with the criminal component of mental illness. Like I've got, mm -hmm. I visited uh, someone in Indiana who was a drug addict and was in a five-year drug program in a, in a, in a prison. Right. Fantastic. Wait, hold on. Remember wow. when I was on your podcast, we talked about penitentiaries? Yes. Penitentiaries were originally, this country mm -hmm. was considered the model of the world in the wow. early 19th century and late 18th century wow. because it had the penitence systems of penitentiaries. Mm -hmm. People would go in and get better. Not anymore. And that's like, why. Privatized long prison. That's where they could like yeah. give them all the money. It's why Alexis, yeah. Alexis de Tocqueville, yeah. who exam wrote Democracy in America, look it up, a wonderful book. Uh, he, the ruse he came here was to study the penitentiary system, but he ended up yeah. writing about equality and the, the process of democracy yeah. taking over the world at the time. But if we could take more or better care and well, some states do it, is it crazy? Right, right, California is yeah. not one of those states. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do something about it, Dr. Drew. Oh, right. Back to Vanessa's question too. You know, I think it sounds like she did go through all of the appropriate stepping down of treatment to slowly start to integrate pieces of her life back. Yeah. So hopefully, when you were asking about that question of like practically, can she still do it yeah. on right. her own? Yeah. Here's what I know but about. But in the family too. No here's that, what I know about step down it. programs: is they're still on her. They, they don't. They don't step yeah. down and let go. They step right. down and are constantly. Yeah. And do you think she knows now? Has it hit home that no matter how great she feels until the day she dies, she's going to take medication? Does she really understand that now? I hope so. I didn't ask that question that way. Uh, I hope so. I know it's part of if the it's program not, it's not, where, where she has to uh, get her own prescriptions filled, she, and they monitor that. Yeah, right. it, I, yeah, I didn't ask that question. I think because she was so matter of fact, like, oh yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm <laughs> You know, I'm on my bed yeah, for I mean, sure. You know, yeah. for, uh, <laughs> she learned she's only 49. When she's 80, will she still be taking these meds? Oh, yeah. Please. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Are we going to make sure she, does she know, even when she's 80, she, she's not she going to pick up? She won't be so much trouble for yeah. us then. But. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> we can talk about this interview all yes. night. We hope you got as much out of it as we did. And let us know what you thought of it in the comment section below. Thank you.